Hello, welcome to Holistically Speaking. I am Morella DeVoe, your host. Our mission with Holistically Speaking is to be the avenue through which the voices of holistic health reach you at the time you need it most. And today we're talking about a different kind of healing. I'm really excited about our show today because we're going to be talking about healing your wallet. And my guest is my friend, Danielle Levelara. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you, Marilla. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Yes, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> this is something we've talked about a lot. For a while. For the last few years, yeah. and I've obviously seen you on your journey. And I'm excited to hear about the new programs, new things that you're launching. And I'm sure that a lot of our, our, our um, viewers haven't really ever thought about the need to heal their wallet or even to look at where their money might need healing. So I think this might be a new concept for a lot of people, don't you think? I do, and it's fun because it came through this year. Like it's something that we've been toying with, I've been working on for a while. And the phrase, heal your wallet, mm -hmm. came up this year while we were working on new programs. And I'm actually working with a network chiropractor, Dr. Julieta Rushford. We're talking about removing energy blocks that are in the body. Wow. This has been revolutionary, so yeah. we're very excited about it. Yeah. And we're going to have to have Julieta Definitely. on the show as well and talk about it. So how does a chiropractor <laughs> What? help with money issues. <laughs> right. So, so um, perhaps we should start with a little bit of background mm. as to how do you, what, how does one end up coaching people on healing their money? Like, what, uh, yes. how did you get here? Well, of course, we always teach what we need to learn. Of course. <laughs> yes. So, I've, money has been part of my life in a way um, for a long time. You know, LCI Fishing Derby, I was actually literally counting the money that came in for the weekend. Mm -hmm. And then I was at Smith Barney for four years um, as yeah. a financial advisor. And so, I was managing money every day. Right. I was there during the crash. Oh, wow. I had about 200 clients and every, it seemed like every weekend some major financial institution was going under and so there was a lot right. of fear and panic. Mm -hmm. And it was then that I started looking at why are we, we make these great plans for people. They would come into Smith Barney, we'd make this fantastic retirement plan and then they wouldn't implement it. And I'd be like, hmm, okay, one, why are they not implementing it? And then two, I was working with people that had a lot more money than yeah. I really ever had. I had, you know, I've never had millions and I was working with people that had millions of dollars. They weren't happy. Mm. So it was like kind of two myths, like, you know, the habits around money and then why more money, yeah. not happy. In fact, sometimes right. more unhappy than, you know, the that average person. Right. And I was like, hmm, what's going on here? And so I started to look into prosperity consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of when the secret came out and it was like, you know, what you think about, you bring about. And so that yeah. was really how it started. And that was in 2010, so that was four years ago. So it's gotten revised a lot, but I went from being a financial advisor to quitting my job and wanting to help people. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of room in the financial services industry to help people with money issues. And I know that sounds kind of ironic. Right. The industry's set up for investments. Yeah, yeah. you have to have a lot of money right. in order to be you know, kind of even received. <laughs> well, and it was so funny because I had people with a lot of money that still were behind on their credit card. I'm like, you could pay off your credit card. Why do you have a balance? And like weren't saving in a regular account where they could access it. Right. So there's all this money dysfunction going on. So you started observing that people, no matter how much money they had, they were, didn't have maybe the best financial relationship with their money? It's the yeah. relationship piece. Mm -hmm. That was the big aha. We actually have a relationship with money. Mm -hmm. And how are we treating it? Like, if your money, you know, yeah. how am I treating you? Am I being right. nice to you? Am I treating you respectfully or not? Right. And so there's respectful money practices and then energetic practices as well. So let's let's stay with that idea for a little bit because I know that this is something that's kind of novel for some people. <laughs> so if you're working with someone and helping them look at their relationship with money, what are some of the things that you might ask them or have them look at? I have them look at their history. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what were they taught about money? What were the messages that they got when they were little? Whether they were overt or just something they picked up. Mm -hmm. And then I do this exercise with every client and every workshop I do, and I do it myself every time. When I say the word money, what's mm -hmm. the first thing that comes to mind? And instantly it's like, is it positive? Is it negative? Is it neutral? Yeah. And we do a journaling exercise and you'd be amazed. Right. I mean, it's like the demons and the freedom and the, I mean, there's so right. much baggage 
around right. our money. Yeah. And so no wonder like we are, don't have a budget or we don't feel right. like savings. Like there's so much in the way. Yeah. yeah. And in the context of relationship to things like, well, are you looking at your money? Right. Are you looking at your bills? You know, are you looking at your <laughs> balance? So, you know, I, I heard someone say once, you know, if money were your lover, you know, would they be calling you back? You know, so right. if you're ignoring it, if you're not calling, you're not paying attention, you're not showing it some love, you know, it's not going to be returning that love. Does that make It's sense? so funny. It doesn't get better when you stick your head in the sand. Yeah. Like, so many people are like, I don't want to look at it. It's a mess. Right. I'm like, okay, I get that with anything, even a relationship, if it's not going well, you, it, there's a lot of fear in there. Right. But if you just dive in, and this is what the teaching has been about, you know, this mm -hmm. last year, is let's just find those places where we're feeling shame or guilt or whatever it is around money. And it's like, I, I see them as like little children. It's like, take them on our lap. Be like, it's okay. Right. You know, we don't have to be feeling shame and guilt. Right. We weren't taught about money, really. I, I rarely find someone that was given a good thorough education, and this is not to say anything bad about our parents or the school system, right. it's just the way the society is. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, you're reminding me of the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yes. Um, I forget his name right now. Yeah, but. Robert Kiyosaki. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, how he had his yeah. birth dad was not necessarily money savvy, but then he had this really close um, father figure who was who taught him everything he knew so so we don't learn it so what are some of the other reasons behind uh, people's money issues that mm. no matter you know a lot of money little money so many people have money issues there's so much attached to it some of it can be religious or spiritual mm -hmm. if you're more in the Christian realm there's this money is evil and right. also if you're a healer um, or identify with just healing modalities. There's there's this kind of pride in poverty. You find it in artists, right? Right. Like if I, I'm a musician, I'm a singer, and like of course, the more I suffer, like the better my songs are, right. right? So there's this poverty mentality that some people feel like it makes their art better, or mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm gonna do it because it's a God-given gift, or it's you know, the universe has blessed me with these talents. I don't want to charge for it, right? But the reality is, we live here in America. Money is we need it in everyday life right and so we have to make peace with it and it's really you know what we'll talk about a little bit later is it's shifting the energy around money from fearful mm -hmm. to loving mm. imagine that love that that money had a loving energy to it right it wasn't something to be afraid of it was something to be embraced and like right let's hang out yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. my friend <laughs> right so you're talking about the healer type so is this a particular group of people that you're tending to work with more? I kind of get the feeling that that's what you're doing more these days. Is that true? Yes. And what's been interesting is it's really a self-identifier, mm -hmm. right? I have attorneys who would say they're healing and I have people that are actually doing massage and things mm -hmm. like that. It's people that are here that have identified something that feels like their purpose. Right. And they're following their path and they're living their purpose. And it's the people that are doing that and are not feeling financially rewarded. Right. Sometimes they're living hand to mouth. Sometimes they're just, you know, not making as much as they thought. But I see a lot of people in crisis. Right. And I mean, I've been there myself. You know, I left Smith Barney and then that was a really good job and yeah. I quit that job and it was pretty frightening the first year so like I'm I sure. have lived all of this right yeah I know the panic around money very well The panic. <laughs> <laughs> yes we yeah. <laughs> yeah we've been there yeah. so yeah what you're saying about the healer type person or the service oriented type right. person there's almost a badge of honor of you yeah. know I'll have a sliding scale I, you know I I can't make a whole lot of money it's money is not spiritual kind right. of a thing right that's a big one yes yeah it, it's it's a bad thing to to have a lot of money right and any of the research into whether it's the universe or some sort of god based vision mm -hmm. that you have it's all about abundance. If right. we're really tapped in to our higher source nature, for example, right. is abundant. So we right. should naturally be abundant and it's so simple and yet we make it so complicated. Right. So part of what I do is clearing all that out of the way. It's like right. the sun is always shining, 
there's a lot of clouds. Right. So what I'm helping people do is remove the clouds so the sun can shine through. Yeah. <laughs> remove these negative beliefs, right. these fears, this um, around money yeah. being being against you or you know did, right. not available to you that that sort of thing. Yeah. I have people look at. Do you think that does money disappoint you? Right. You know, actually personifying it and it's seeing like do, you know does money have your back or not? And right. like I've had plenty of times you know where I feel like. I'm like, hey, money, where'd you go? Right. Like, come on, girlfriend's working hard here. Where are you? <laughs> so tell us about your process. How do you work with someone to help them heal your wallet? Yeah, and it's been great because I've had really nine years, you know, mm -hmm. four years at Smith Barney and then right. almost five years now. Right. And so we're getting, we're really honing it in and that's yeah, where yeah. I'm excited. So I start with looking at, um, we start with the journaling on money. It's like, mm -hmm. where are you at? Most people I find are on a continuum, negative, neutral, positive when it comes to money. So I want to find out. So just to clarify, negative, neutral, or positive, meaning uh, bank account balance or <laughs> yes, emotionally? Yes, more emotionally and energetically. I meet people all the time. They're like, I'm totally fine with money. And I talk to them, and they are. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, you should come and help me like figure yeah. out how did you get there. Right. Most people have some something negative. Mm -hmm. And so if you're really negative, thinking that money is evil and just really feeling despair, right. I want to help shift those folks. To, let's get to neutral. Let's just get to a peaceful place. Like We don't mm -hmm. really have an opinion either way. It's just like, okay, I don't hate money anymore. Right. That's the first step. And we do that in a lot of ways. I look at the energy around the history Mm -hmm. What was the story you grew up? You grew up with. How is that story influencing you now? A lot of times we look at our parents and we're like, "Oh, my father spent any, every penny he had." Oh, mm -hmm. how, are you able to save? No. Right. You know. So a lot of times we're adopting their habits. Sometimes we rebel against them. My parents told me, "Don't get a credit card." What's the first thing I did when I got the to first? UVM? I got a credit card. You know, <laughs> and I was kind of like, "Yeah, I'm going to get a credit card. You can't tell me." Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so first we look at the history, and then we go to the body. Mm -hmm. And we start, and this has been, the, this is like the revolutionary piece, right. is we look at where are we holding the stress mm -hmm. and the money issues in our body. I tend to feel it more in my heart when I'm having a negative money space. And we work on healing that. Yeah. Then we shift the mindset, you know, can we just have a positive outlook on money? After all that, then we go to managing expectations and creating a budget and a new mm -hmm. vision. But we've really got three or four steps to go through first. So the tactics of the budget and you know the checkbook balancing and all of that, that comes later then? It comes later and everyone's mm -hmm. like, well, I just want a budget. And I'm like, right. I know, but you're 35 years old and you have never created one, so let's look right. at why. You know, right, there's right. a statistic out there that I think most Americans, 60 some percent don't have a budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, and I'm always curious, how are people, how are people right. living? Either they have plenty of money and they don't have to worry about it, or they're just sticking their head in the sand and there's all this right. financial drama, so. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah, or not have a sort of methodical, you know, just kind of a haphazard way of right. using their money. Well, and what I say, a lot of people think a budget is restrictive, and believe me, like I'm a free mm -hmm. spirit, I don't like rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the budget is like, mm, I don't always love it. But for me, it gives me information. Mm -hmm. I think everyone at least once a year should take what I call a financial snapshot. Yeah. Where are you? Where's your money going? Is that where you want it to go? You right. may uncover something that you've been paying for for six months. You're like, oh, I don't use that anymore. Or I'm really not going to the gym. Or I really want to be doing something different. You look at it and then you make a change. Right. You know, it's, it's, people think it's this dark, scary thing. And now once we've uncovered it, we have to like live by these rules. You know? right. And I just say, no, are you, is your budget in line with your values? Yeah. If it's not, great. You know, here's some tips for how to bring it in alignment. Right, right. Yeah. So I'm really curious about the, I'm really curious about the body piece. I'm really curious about the story, you know, the history kind of investigation. So, but since the, the body piece is such a new thing, um, I'm curious as to what it is that you look at. What do you find? How do you work with it? Oh, it's been amazing. Well, and the process was great because Julieta came to my first workshop. I was doing Heal Your Wallet. That's it. Step one. Right. She came. The next day she called me. She's like, oh my gosh, we have to do the body piece. She's like got this book idea and all this stuff. And mm -hmm. I was like, tell me more. Mm -hmm. And she said, this is my work. For 20 years, I've been working with people in their body. They're holding emotional traumas. And with her work through breathing and through the network chiropractic and essential oils, she's helping people retrain their brain around mm. emotions. And so that's what we're doing is it's finding where it is. Right. You know, sometimes we just ask people to tune in. When you hear the word money, 
if something's coming up, feel where is that in your body? It could mm -hmm. be in your big toe, right. you know, but, and it's different for everyone. And it's like going to that space and then breathing into it. And it's very, it's a very simple process. Mm -hmm. The tricky part is we uncovered over 50 emotions that are negative that people have related to money. Wow. And we were like, and it's what I've seen in the last mm -hmm. nine years. I mean, all kinds of things. So this is like an onion. Yeah. You may find fear and then, okay, there's some guilt in there and maybe there's some shame. Mm -hmm. You know, society's kind of set us up for, hey, don't you want this loft credit card? But then, oh, you're bad for having credit card debt. So mm -hmm. there's all these mixed emotions and mm -hmm. uh, mixed messages that we're getting. Right. Yeah. Right. And so it, this the body piece, you're typically then working with Julieta on it and kind of clearing it through chiropractic, you said, and oils. Yeah, chiropractic and oils, and it's really awareness too. Mm -hmm. You know, we're dealing, we have clients all over the country, so clearly, right. I mean, they could fly here and see her. Gotcha. Um, they could do network chiropractic, but part of it uh, ultimately let's start with just mm -hmm. an awareness. Right. Where are we feeling certain things in our body? And this has been new for me, you know, right. I'm really excited to be like, oh wow, I feel this here, and to just pay attention to it. Right. Yeah. So what's next? So once somebody understands, so do we need to dive deeper into the history piece? Like what do you uncover in the history piece when you're looking at someone's story with money? The history is fascinating because you, as you can imagine, everyone has a different history. Mm -hmm. There tends to be a, a, some defining moment where something happened that when we were very little that we've anchored as a belief mm -hmm. that is not true. Right. And so, it could be, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. Whatever it is that you were taught when you were little, you tended to adopt that. You have to work hard for money is a classic one, right? I feel like we've all been taught that. Right. If you look at it, when you're really in your flow and in your purpose, it feels like it's easy. Right. And those that work the hardest, you know, think about people working minimum wage jobs. They are working their behinds off yeah. and they are not making great money. Right. So it's things like that that we've built our life around that aren't true. So yeah. that's what I try to see. Where are we adopting a social norm that is not serving us anymore? Yeah. Yeah. Can you rattle off the top of your head some of the most common limiting beliefs that you find? Because I think that some might be all of a sudden uh, might ring a bell for some of our viewers yeah. that might they might realize oh my god I have that belief. I have that so what are some of the ones that you could just kind of think off the top of your definitely head? the work hard for money and mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we're not going to work hard but right. um right that you can't have a lot of money if you're not like you know right working your tail off there's okay. you can't be spiritual and have wealth mm -hmm. that is a big one mm -hmm. people are taking their spiritual path they're putting it over here and they're putting money over here right that really getting that to come together mm -hmm. um, and then really the myth you know the myth that money does buy happiness right money allows us choices yeah right and there's a certain statistic that if you're under like if you're near poverty level and you're in crisis mode all the time there's not a lot of happiness because you, you actually feel like, this was a fascinating discovery, we have a primal fear and terror, kind of like we're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, right. but it's money. Yeah. If we don't know where our money's coming from, we actually feel like we might die. Right. And it's not true, right? Yeah. I mean, even if no money ever came to me again, like yeah. I would probably be sleeping on your couch, but right. like I wouldn't be dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, but there is a, an irrational terror of you know the loss of well-being or the loss of your life. You know, right. I'm going to be under a bridge and die if I. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of them. You know, I can also think like uh, money doesn't grow on trees. Right. Um, and then I think that uh, culturally, and tell me if you agree, but um, like our society has this maybe unspoken general consensus that money is bad and that if you have a lot of money you're a bad person yes you are you know kind of stingy you are you know um maybe uh egotistical or right or that greedy, greedy you're mean, that you're, mean. Yeah. you're demeaning people you're, and right. yeah and there are certainly people that are wealthy mm -hmm. that that fit into that category there right. are plenty of people that aren't that fit into right. that category for me money is a mirror right so if you're already 
a kind-hearted person and generous, it's going to make you more kind-hearted. Right. If you're already a jerk, <laughs> right, it might make you more of a jerk. <laughs> you know, so that's right. where it's just magnifying who we are. Exactly. In the moment. But you're right, there is this it's really interesting because I've, I've been studying the history of money and you figure in America we started with the Puritans, mm -hmm. which was the work hard for money, don't flaunt it, right. um, all of that. And then there's this conflicting view that we're in America. Right. And anyone can be rich and anyone can be president. Right. So those are very uncomfortable bedfellows, right. you know, and it's like... Yeah. There's a lot going on in there. And I'm sure it's similar um, in different countries as well. Right. But money really came from the sacred. I mean, it was pieces of gold and silver right. that in the beginning of time, people thought were literally pieces of the sun and the moon, mm -hmm. which they were worshiping as gods. Right. So money, coins, right. were pieces of God. And right. so they were just used to worship. Yeah. And then, I mean, think about where we are now, mm -hmm. you know, and I love to think about how virtual it is. Right. Like how much actual cash yeah. do we have on us? <laughs> yeah. And it is really just a means of exchange. Right. You know, we're exchanging energy with each other. This is just a way of, you know, money is just a way of facilitating that. The Another one that's coming up for me right now is the self-worth does not equal the net worth piece, mm -hmm. right? A lot right. of people think their credit score or their bank account balance is saying who they are. Right. And that is really hard. You are not your credit score. Yes, right. you know, there's a lot of things that contributed to whatever your credit score is. But right. to really own that and say, you know, especially if mm. you have some sloppy patterns in the past, mm. you know, I have done that as well. Own that. We're making some shifts. We're moving forward. Right. Yeah. That's a really interesting point that the amount of money you have doesn't define who you are. Right. You know, <laughs> that's so interesting. So, um, excuse me, I have to cough. <laughs> So you look at whether pe where people are, you know, negative, neutral, or positive. You look at their story, their, their beliefs, their history with, with money. You look at their body, their blocks. And so then how do you continue moving forward? We look at the energy, mm -hmm. and that's where we get a little woo-woo. Okay. <laughs> so tell us about the woo-woo. Part of that is being open to receiving. Mm -hmm. Um, are you, we open to receiving, right? We want more money. Yes. And so if someone offers you a cup of coffee, they mm -hmm. want to buy you coffee, do you accept it or right. do you not? Do you let someone hold the door open for you? And people mm -hmm. say, oh, that's not related. I'm like, really? Right. How good are you at receiving? Oh, I never take anything from anyone. Okay, so for a week, try mm -hmm. to just say yes. Right. You know, clearly sometimes it's not appropriate and there's strings attached, but 99% of the time it's fine. Right. I hardly ever pay for lunch mm -hmm. <laughs> and pay for coffee, and I'm just gracious. I've gotten really good at receiving. Right. So there's the energy around it, which is that's where it's, it's really hard to have anything tangible. I carry a $100 bill in my wallet. Mm -hmm. It always yeah. makes me feel abundant. I can't say I don't have any money. If there's an emergency, right. I can use it. But it's little things like that that have calmed me down. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm single now, so it's like, it's just me. Right. I'm the one who earns my money. When it's gone, it's gone. There's no place to right. go for backup. Right. So I'm laying a solid foundation yeah. now. And what, everything you're saying, what it's making me think of, is going back to the idea of this relationship. Yes. You know, it's like, if, you, if money is your friend, and you don't let your friend ever do something nice for you. Right. You know, then <laughs> you know, they're not gonna they're gonna stop. They're not gonna come. Or if you say, you know, your friend is mean and, you know, doesn't have your back and, you know Always bad mouthing your is friend, bad -mouthing right? Your friend, exactly. <laughs> they're not going to come anymore, right? Well, and it's funny because this is a very masculine-feminine conversation as mm -hmm. well, that the masculine energy tends to want to give. Mm -hmm. And the feminine energy is more receiving, and we've kind of got it backwards in America, right? right? And so it's the feminine energy to receive, and men actually want to give. Right. I was talking to my mother the other day, and she was needing some help stacking wood. Yeah. And you know, her boyfriend was like, oh, I'll come over and help you. And she's like, no, 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 no. I was like, mom, he wants to help you. <laughs> Let him yeah, help you. Yeah, let him. He wa and think about, like, when you give something to someone and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Right. It actually can make you feel a little bad. You want yeah. to give that gift yeah. away. So that energy, how we give and receive, is very important. I tell people, and this may sound a little crazy to some, but if you're really feeling like you're in poverty, give some money away. Right. It can be a dollar. It can be a quarter. There is always someone that has less than you. Yeah. And it's the energy. We have to keep the money moving. You right. know, when we get into that hoarding mode and like, I'm going to stay in and like, not going to do anything it's stopping with it. the flow. Right. Mm -hmm. We want to be in a joyful space. So whatever we can do, there's 
plenty of things we can do to bring us joy that don't cost yeah. any money. Exactly. Yeah. So you're looking at the energy. Are you in a receiving, flowing, right. you know, allowing place? Right. And then that, what's next? And then we go into gratitude. Okay. About money's coming in, typically. Right. Most people have money coming in. So let's keep track of it. Right. Let's notice when it comes in and say thank you. Right. I find when people stop and, and start adding up like how mm -hmm. much money comes in every day, yeah. they're surprised. It's more than they think. Right. So it's just being grateful. Right. Looking around and seeing all the things that money purchased. You know, they yeah, purchased yeah. the chairs, your dress, my you know, exactly. it's like money it has been blessing us with its loving energy. Right. We just have been blind to it. Yeah. And um, <laughs> my sister and I uh, call the money dance for yeah. many years. Like, do the money dance. Like, yay. <laughs> right, you <know>? totally. <laughs> like, $5, oh, woo Oh, my gosh. Whenever <laughs> I get it, I'm like, woo yeah. <laughs> It could be anything, right? I found a quarter on the floor. <laughs> woo right. um, So we have about, about another five minutes. woo going so, fast. So <laughs> um, I want to be sure to show uh, your website and the book that you yes, recommend. So let's uh, go ahead and show that to our viewers. Yes. Um, this is your website, uh, www.healyourwallet.com. And this is where people can find your coaching programs, how to contact you and all of that. Yes. And then the book that's really moved you lately is Money is Love, right? Yes. By Barbara Wilder. This yeah. book, when I first was using this phrase, like yeah. people kind of convulse, <laughs> right? And the, yeah. whole, the book is all about these wonderful... You can hold that up. Oh, yeah. So. Would you like to see it? It's got some really great exercises, how to be mm -hmm. circulating uh, money with love and just really imagining that money has a healing energy to it and a loving energy right. instead of fearful. And this is one way we can change the world. Right. One person at a time shifting that energy to a positive right. space. Yeah. So to wrap up in the last couple of minutes, we've gotten to the point of looking at the energy, the money blocks, the beliefs, all of this stuff. So um, what follows? Like how, how would you want to wrap that up? It's funny because I find once we've handled that and people are in a good space, mm -hmm. pretty good. Yeah. It's like kicked out of the nest. <laughs> and that's when maybe you step into budgeting and right. looking at the actual behaviors. Right. Like we've, we've set up good habits. Now they want to set up good habits. Right. Right. So I have people that I've coached, you know, two or three years ago. And once in a while I'll see them and they're like, I'm doing great. Still following my budget. I've saved this much money. I just bought a house. Mm -hmm. Like once it's fixed, I really feel like it's fixed. And then there's, are we going to invest? Are we going to grow our business? Do we want mm -hmm. to, you know, buy real estate? That's a whole separate, right. you know, that's kind of the advanced version. Right. First, let's get all this handled. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I think about is how all areas of your life are interconnected. Yes. But it's rarely as clear as it is with money, how money touches every area Everything. of your life, right? Yes. So um, is there any particular way that you've seen is uh, especially salient in terms of mm. the other really areas of life that have maybe involved? Money and our love relationships. Oh. Like I find for me, I clear out a money block, I get a date. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hmm. But it's a very similar, you're thinking about your relationship to money. Right. It's like your relationship to love. Right. So that's a fascinating, we could do a whole other segment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how, do, how do your relationships improve as exactly. your relationship with money Well, improves. and part of it is you're loving yourself. When you're mm -hmm. healing your money relationship, a lot of it is about self-love. Right. That naturally opens up other areas of your life. Right. Yes. So this was phenomenally <laughs> enjoyable and, yes. uh, and interesting, I'm sure, for our, our viewers. Um, it's obviously this is really personal in yeah. many cases very sensitive subject to it talk is. about money um, it's it's one of the best kept secrets you know people really will is. talk about <laughs> how their marriage is falling apart but they rarely will talk about their finances so thank you so much for joining me and and bringing light to this topic I'm really hopeful that this has touched some of our viewers and you know either live or <laughs> when we have it on YouTube so so thank you so much for your great work Thank you yes, for joining thank us. Thank you. <laughs> and um, thank you for, for joining us. Uh, you'll
probably be hearing a lot more from Danielle. She was just a speaker <laughs> at Ignite Burlington last night and uh, doing lots of great work. And in the next few weeks, we'll have a few of the speakers from Ignite Burlington last night. So please stay tuned with us for the next few weeks because there's some really phenomenal people who will be joining us as well. Take care. See you next time.